started so so what you can do you can start the lecture means i will just start the basic then because it will go on till now till 6 o'clock okay okay up okay. i don't know some it will always be live on youtube yeah it's already okay. live on so maybe i start so so what you can so, do you can start the lecture then i will just start the basic. welcome on see then with the because it will go on till last no, six o'clock okay, okay. Of our spark program. So uh, you know this is we are concluding this hot tub course with a set of three lectures, uh, which was the biomass processing and the catalysis. So this will be delivered by Professor Bernardo, and uh, Professor Bernardo has some issues with uh, there at his home, so he has sent the lectures in recording. So he will be. probably joining after the first lecture for any questions regarding the previous lecture and the current lecture so let us start with the current lecture then we will take up questions if he is around here then after one hour then uh, we will proceed with the remaining two lectures okay so i request my uh, dr nayak to kindly start the the first lecture which is the processing of biomass Hi, I'm Professor Bernardo G. Hi, I'm Professor Bernardo G. from School of Chemistry, Federal University of Rio de Janeiro, and today. We're going to talk about processing of biomass in, in the second lecture about ionic liquids and eutectic solvents in nature. <laughs> so, to talk about processing of biomass, we need to know about biomass. What's the meaning? What's the definition relating to this? So, according to U.S. Energy Information Administration, biomass is renewable organic material. So, so to talk about plants, processing of biomass, we need oh, and microbial. What's the meaning? What's the don't have microbial biomass? Relating to this. I think we do. According so, to U.S. Energy According to this uh, U.S. Administration, examples of biomass are Wood and wood processing wastes, so firewood, wood pellets, wood chips, lumber, furniture, uh, sawdust, black liquor from pulp and paper mills. So you have here some photos about that. A black liquor uh, during the uh, paper, the uh, pulp process processing to so then make paper. We have some uh, incredible harsh uh, chemical processing of this material, of wood chips, of a number of material, eucalyptus material, uh, to make a pulp and then paper. Uh, we have uh, yeah, sodium hydroxide, we have um, Sodium sulfate uh, have and other types of chemicals, and then processing the material. We the waste is this black liquor uh, that is rich and lignin and degraded to cellulose and other materials, but basically rich in lignin. You can see how thick this is. So another example is agricultural crops and waste materials. So you have uh, corn, soybeans, sugar canes, sweet grass, wood plants, algae, uh, crop and food processing residues. Uh, it also have here some examples. We have rice husks or rice hulls, um, sugar bagasse, uh, corn cobs. And 
the biogenic materials and municipal solid waste. So garbage, essentially. Uh, paper, cotton and wool products, food yard and wood waste, uh, animal manure, human sewage, garbage, uh, but we have a production each year of 140 gigatons. Uh, to make it easy, uh, I turned it into kilograms. So 140 gigatons is about 100 trillion kilograms. It's so much each year of biomass. It's almost a Mount, Mount Everest, Everest weight each year. It's, it's very heavy, it's so much. We need to, to transform this in something valuable, in something useful. So, uh, the world know that. <laughs> and try to make this biomass into energy. Uh, here, oh. community generation potential of agricultural residues in select countries. So we have some, some countries here, China, USA, India, Europe, Europe not a country, but okay, uh, Brazil, Argentina, Canada, big countries, uh, big regions and so if you have a big region big country you you probably gonna make a, a, a huge amount of reason same thoughts with we can make here with uh, the major global producers of forest residues we have big countries that big producers of residues. So Russian Federation is the biggest one. Maybe you put here the quantity of forest residues by the hectare, the area of the country, you have a better comparison, I don't know. But Brazil here is the fourth one, fourth player and we have a big deforestation occurring every year, so probably this number is going to grow. Like I said, uh, some of this material is used to your purpose. Just um, uh, about 30% uh, is used to few purpose. But from this quantity, only 30% is used to, to really to power and then you have 70% uh, of losses. So the, the quantity of losses, the waste produced in this material to produce power is too heavy to the world. We have to think in, in another to, grow, to make value with them. So you can work with that. Value. You have to transform this thing, this biomass, this waste. So mm. one option is biorefinery. Here we will see this yeah. in this picture. Is the sound uh, audible for all the participants? There's no sound. Uh, you can. Okay, the YouTube no, is no coming. Technologies came okay, from okay, fine. We're just working on it. Yeah, Papu, uh, just hold on for the this particular more, session. Uh, the sound is not coming. More but in the YouTube, it's there. Here, just hold on. By cases, by oils, heat, power, electricity. Uh, but you can make uh, animal feed. 
like fertilizer, uh, biochemical, and on other products. Why not? So, in this lecture, I'm going to talk about three types of agroindustrial wastes. Uh, okay, lig lignocellulosic materials, uh, crustacean shells, and materials that have keratin, uh, feathers, wool. And to make examples of uh, how ionic liquids in intact solvents can be involved uh, to move, to make value of this this okay. so okay. first okay. Fine, here fine. so like uh, cellulose uh, material well, if you, just check if you are not mute and uh, many is it coming now participants products are rich and cellulose hmm? we think of yes. that if it's a plant it has cellulose not uh, yes you are getting the this problem out? is that cellulose that can be this uh, black thing here uh, it's involved with M cellulose and then it's linked with lignin we'll just give us two and minutes because in YouTube it's coming then we move to YouTube here, uh, we Try to work to liberate, yes. release. No. Yeah, now it's coming. Right. And then break them into glucose and make new products. So we have some problems here because I just want the cellulose. But the cellulose, uh, not so easy to break. We have inside cellulose amorphous regions. Okay, it's a good one. It's a good local, a good site to make our, our hydrolysis thing. But we have real huge regions of crystal, crystals, crystallites. And then uh, we have to transform this crystalline region in a more region. So the pretreatment going to remove or uh, decrease the cellulose crystallinity. Here we can see the uh, cellulose structure this is the beta uh, 14 glucan. Uh, we have some uh, uh, hydrogen bonding here between the, the structure, between the chains. Cellulose structure. Here is we the, have a uh, solubilization of M cellulose is, is desirable too. We have a little difference between Types of lignocellulosic materials, you have hardwood chylon, uh, softwood chylon, uh, difference between the, ramif the ramifications uh, and types of um, monomers. Uh, basically, we have chylon, but it can be here uh, a glucuronic acid, a monoronic acid, uh, uh, galacturonic uh, ribose, arabinose, no ribose, no arabinose. So you have the different kinds of monomers. You can uh, be present in these chains of chylons or chyloglucans or glucomannans. Uh, Mcellulose is <laughs> uh, many types of polysaccharides. But the chylon is the more common. And 
the big villain or injustice, the real the lightning. We want to remove the lightning, but then what can I do? What we can do? Lightning have to be worked to be a new product too. I, we, we have to think more than just cellulose or M cellulose. Well, the traditional pretreatments is the alkaline or acid treatment, diluted or concentrated. A uh, physical one, named steam explosion. And then you can go to uh, enzymatic hydrolysis or ST hydrolysis. But you can, uh, it's more and more work using enzymatic instead of ST uh, hydrolysis. Uh, uh, majorly when you think and generate uh, glucose to be fermented. Because when you use acid hydrolysis, you generate some products that can inhibit the, the yeast uh, that gonna be fermenting the glucose. So asthmatic is the uh, a second pretreatment. First you work with alkaline or acid or physical combining that and then enzymatic one. So I'm going to show you an example. Uh, sugar cane bagasse, we have one with no treatment. Then you have one steam exploded. Another one uh, with uh, ammonium hydroxide diluted. Another one with uh, sulfuric acid diluted uh, also. Uh, in steam explosion, uh, meaning that you put the, the baguette in the autoclave and pressurize them and suddenly you remove the pressure and then he explodes. Uh, is that the, 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 the meaning of that? Well, it's the traditional pretreatment. But you can see you have some types of uh, problems that you have some waste that you have to treat as the waste, I'll call it I mean waste. Uh, is sometimes you don't get so much glucose that you want, or so much uh, removal of lignin, or so much. Uh, decrease of crystallinity of the cellulose. So we have uh, enough space to explore another options like ionic liquids. These two ionic liquids, it's emblematic. It's, it's the, the initial of the works is all about iminazolium uh, one, Ethyl 3 methyl metazolium acetate and 1 butyl 3 methyl metazolium chloride. Is the, both are the most used in the treatment, in the pre treatment of the lignocellulosic materials between the ionic liquids. Uh, they are very fast. Uh, you can see in the, this video is not uh, a lignocellulosic material, it's only cotton. So it's very, very fast in dissolving them, just about uh, 20 seconds. Probably you have a high temperature in there, uh, 100, 180 degrees to be so fast, uh, but it's only cotton, so it's more easy to. Uh, the idea of solubilization, dissolution of this material uh, is not hydrolysis, only dissolution. It's about that figure here. 
the ionic liquid they interact between this hydron bonding and this intramolecular hydron bonding uh, between the cellular chains. So this means that each chain can be easily uh, be separated from each other. And then you have everything dissolved and everything amorphous. So it's a, a good way to remove the or decrease the crystallinity of this material, right? Here a uh, proposal of fluxogram Hello? Uh, proposal of uh, fractionation of this material. So you have the biomass here, top, crash, drying, and then adding the ionic liquids and some water. Uh, the first process using ionic liquids, we emphasize that we don't want to use water, but that in really I we want to use water. Uh, just that in the presence of water, the ionic liquids don't know dissolve so much of this material, so we try to avoid it. But some quantity of water is good to uh, have low cost. So to reduce the, the cost, I don't think it's very expensive. So if you can uh, uh, change 10% uh, of the ionic liquids with water and maintain the same uh, dissolution power, it's okay, it's better. So here we have heating and steering, then you add end solvent and cellulose precipitation. Uh, you continue and remove another end solvent. No, no. Here you add end solvent, cellulose precipitation, and then you remove the end solvent, and then you have a lignin precipitation. Uh, then you remove water and add end solvent to end cellulose, and re regenerate the ionic liquid. Uh, yeah, uh, I wish this worked this way, but in, in, in real world, uh, some uh, the cellulose precipitates, yeah, but some kind of um, others precipitate too, but in very small quantity. So. It's our lowest rich material, no, 100%. And then, uh, lignin precipitate, yeah, but only the um, high molar mass lignin precipitate. Uh, if you have some degraded lignin or small all, only the oligomers or monomers of lignin, they probably gonna stay with ionic liquid. And even when you precipitate the MC rows, uh, probably these small molecules related to lignin, and then maybe he, he, he still maintained in the ionic liquid. So you have to be another uh, process to remove that. Or another way is to make, uh, in this first step here, the solution step, uh, to make in conditions that don't promote uh, lignin degradation to 
uh, avoid the formation of oligomers and uh, monomers. Here are some examples of using uh, ionic liquid 2 pretreatment. So here we have uh, uh, use of cotton stalks uh, 120 degrees Celsius for hours, comparing different uh, ionic liquids. Tia, uh, meaning tritiamine, uh, eight beam, eight beam uh, probably you don't have the nothing alkyl here, just Instead of mean, the methyl imidazolium, you have butyl imidazolium. Uh, the same here, you have methyl imidazolium, no, nothing of alkyl. All with sulfate, we have a ST component strong here, and different results. So, when you compare with the same anion, different cations, uh, we have, you have uh, some similar M cell load removal. Uh, that's very different power of the de delignification. So you have a better delignification with a little more uh, apolar, more hydrophobic uh, chain with put you here. Uh, Cellulose loss. We have a huge cellulose loss uh, with working with tracylamine here yeah, with uh, 59%. At, uh, uh, when you compare the type of anion, it's the same tracylamine you see that so, uh, sulfate will work better than sulfate. We don't, don't have any MC loss removal. Uh, some delignification and less cell loss loads, loss. Comparing here just the and the rising of the temperature, you see the rise of temperature uh, increase the cellulose loss. loss. Uh, have similar uh, delignification uh, and higher m cellulose removal, and probably some degradation of the lignin too. Uh, here we have probably degradation of the cellulose too. Uh, some acidic ionic liquids promote the hydrolysis of the cellulose to glucose, and then the temperature make the rest, uh, promoting the formation of furfural, the 5 hydroxymethyl furfural. Uh, levulinic acid and esters of levulinic acid. And, like I said, the lignin 2 we have the promotion of the degradation, uh, formation of oligomers and glycol. If you have this intention, it's okay, but if you don't have, you have to pay attention. Here are more examples of the use of ionic lipids with dif different lignocellulosic materials. Now I'm going to uh, uh, highlight some ones. Here, uh, we can try uh, other methods like microwave heating. So you can improve the time. Here, I think it's just 
uh, oversize the, the time, uh, 46 hours is too much. Uh, well, in four minutes to microwave, it's, it's enough or, well, here the, the focus is about uh, the lignification using southern yellow pine uh, as feed material and um, C2-mean acetate. Né? O C2-mean é one ethyl free methyl imidazolium, K2. Uh, so you have much more dignification use microwave heating than with uh, uh, heating steering method. Uh, then you uh, use a key different type uh, of solvent. Here the same, but another example you have so many different. Uh, here you use acetone water mixer one by one probably. Uh, volume. Uh, and here we have some other works using this, this kind of method, ultrasound irradiation or microwave irradiation. Uh, you can see some uh, details missing in, in this first table. You need to know uh, what the power of this microwave heating. Uh, you, you can use a reactor, a microwave reactor, or you can use your oven, microwave oven, uh, to get higher uh, power. Uh, time, granulometry, you can see if it's high. It's a good information too. So you have another examples that you can use this methodology. Here, yeah, good comparison. Uh, you can see different temperatures using aqui o, o C1, uh, C1 mean, uh, methyl sulfate, uh, that the increase of temperature increase significantly the, ligni the, the lignification. No, uh, yeah rise of the concentration of lignin it's great uh, so you can see all the the rising of the temperature that this effect in this case here uh, in using key h mean uh, same anion man in room temperature you even can be solubilized and then with uh, 70 degrees, you have uh, uh, 275 gram by liter. Um, interesting here that uh, using EF6 as anion, you don't have a solubilization of lignin. Uh, you can think that well, you have so much aromatic groups, uh, it's hydrophobic, it have to be hydrophobic, hydrophobic. Uh, epaphysis have to, to work in this way, but it's not. It's a different kind of hydrophobic, the PF6 and aromatic groups. And you have some kind of uh, more acid to, to have a, this influence in the solubilization and more temperature. Okay. Here, just a good preparation of about the the acid power here, comparing acetate with sulfate, <laughs> it's a very big difference of yield. Uh, here using methanol as an solvent, you can use acetone water, methanol, uh, sol aqueous solutions of 
uh, sodium hydroxide, just water, just acetone. Here, another example about time. You can see more time can uh, be related with more uh, delignification uh, using the same conditions. Uh, here you can see uh, different types of anions, amino acid anions, using cholinium uh, ca cation. Everything is equal. Uh, just the, the comparing the anions, the power of the anions, you have similar results. Uh, just uh, phenylalanine being uh, uh, a low value, but the for three firsts here is the lysinate, glycinate, alalanine have similar values. And even the other ones is I don't have the the deviation here the the error but can be statistically the same. Uh, and then uh, I don't talk about in this lecture, but in the first lecture, I talked about the addition of other solvents. We see addition with water, but other solvents can be uh, added uh, basically to improve uh, the viscosity, improve in the meaning not to higher viscosity, is to decrease the viscosity. Uh, to facilitate the mass transfer uh, in the, the processing. So you can use uh, uh, dimethyl sulfoxid, uh, dimethyl acetamide, uh, dioxane, methanol, uh, dimethyl formamide. So you can use many types of co solvents. Uh, and here, in the first, the four uh, first is not good results, but the last ones, yeah, are good re results in the lignification. And uh, yeah, you have some feed material different, different too. Well, using eutetic solvents in this case instead of ionic liquids. Uh, ionic liquids uh, interact with cellulose uh, differently from eutetic solvents, but not so much. Uh, but the eutetic solvents interact much more with lignin. So uh, the idea of using eutetic solvents is basically to remove all the lignin in there. This means that you can even uh, alter the structure of cellulose, uh, but not so much with like ionic liquid. We, we don't expect using a tech solvent to turn all crystalline uh, cellulose into a more product one. Uh, like you expect using ionic liquid. You can have, but uh, maybe you can't talk on the liquidification. Oh, but it's, it's not going to uh, disturb the enzymatic process. Uh, no, no, an enzymatic process is going to occur. Um, just to remove lignin is is good. Uh, cellulose is going to be altered somehow. Uh, not not everything is going to be uh, amorphous. Something, but not everything. Okay. So here you can see 
in the results uh, the use of many hydrogen bond donors uh, being acetic, so many uh, colline chlorides and many acids used in tests. Being in, in literature, uh, oxalic acid uh, is related to degradation of lignin, not just solution, but degradation. Higher temperature, oxalic acid, and probably you're going to be very degraded lignin. So you have other acids tested here. You have lactic acid, you have formic acid, and some kind of not acids too. Glycerol, iflan glycol, um, have imidazole urea. Uh, you can see that many cases uh, you have uh, temperature a little higher than tested for ionic liquids. Here you see 90 degrees, uh, here 60 degrees with the low values of temperature, but you see very other higher than that. And in the case of ionic liquids, you have 50 degrees, 70 degrees, uh, no much more than that. But it works. Here is another good example uh, of recovery of this material. So you see the first photo here, the A, the components before the preparation of tests, then the preparation of tests, then the use of uh, in race straw, uh, the addition of, of end solvents and the removal of lignin and then the recovery deaths. And that here is the colline chloride lact lactic acid with little water. Uh, and precipitation is just with water. And two, three hours at four degrees. And here you can see that the deaths is not exactly uh, the same color than the, the, when they are prepared. Some kind of something, probably a, a monomerous lignin, uh, were extracted too. So just a, uh, some examples of companies that have implemented this Pretreatment using ionic liquids and electric solvents uh, uh, to pretreat main material, lignin cellulosic materials. You have here uh, J Bay, a joint bioenergy institute, from uh, a research partnership led by Lawrence Berkeley National Laboratory, Berkeley Lab. Uh, and more than uh, six labs, national labs and universities in the United States, uh, located in Emeryville, California, USA. Another company is Lixea, an uh, old Chrysalix Technologies. It's a spin off from Imperial College London located in London and in Tallinn, Estonia. Another one is a natural fiber welding. It's a, a very different one that they use uh, test wastes to produce uh, another test like composites uh, joining uh, my, uh, only vegetable materials, plant materials, uh, cotton, and other things, and the tessel look like a, a leather. So they not just make clothes, but make shoes, make another kind of things. It, it's very interesting, very different. 
the, the idea in, in, in Another agrodisal waste is crustacean shells, crab shells, lobster shells, cockroach shells, no, no, cockroach, no. Uh, but here we can see a mountain of crab shells. Uh, probably the uh, smelly, not so good. So you can see the, the the treatment, the traditional treatment here, you have crab shells, greeting, uh, the proteinization using uh, sodium hydroxide, washing, then demineralization with acid, and washing dry, e, then you obtain chitin. Uh, chitin is insoluble in water. Uh, in many other things, uh, is only dissolved in concentrated hydro hydrochloric acid or methane sulfonic acid, uh, although with partial cleavage of the biopolymer. So, another problem to resolve. Here, the structure of the chitin, you see. Uh, acetyl glucosamine, a structure, a polymer of that. Uh, you have arrangement and parallel and parallel arrangements. So we have different uh, ways to, to pack them. And here are other types of solvents that can be worked. Besides the acid things, uh, you have some uh, solutions, alkali solutions, to work with alkali, just salts, salts with urea, uh, salts with solvents, and ionic liquids, the basic ones, the nosoleums. Uh, many works with amine. That means one allyl free methyl with azolium bromide or chloride. Uh, you can see some types of eutetics with urea and diarrhea. And another type of things that you use for polymers too. Uh, just some results using here, comparing uh, the traditional ones with ionic liquid zeotetics. So the best one is just with ionic liquid, 10% using Bemin uh, C4, uh, one butyl free methyl chloride, heating under in that atmosphere. Uh, 110 degrees. Uh, similar one is using diesel-tetic uh, choline chloride with diarrhea, uh, heating at 100 degrees for six hours. Uh, I think it's more uh, relatable that that using uh, crab. Here, an uh, uh, interesting thing that using uh, more or less uh, chitin, uh, you can change to solution, to a gel. Uh, remember that chitin uh, have a structure uh, almost like a polyelectrolyte. If, if you remove the acetyl in the, in the amide group, you have a polyelectrolyte, a chitosan. So you can use this like a, a, a polymer ionic liquid, a polymer ionic liquid, some kind of how. Here, yeah. uh, mixture uh, chitin solution 
if a solu solution you can bind a compost, an ion gel composed, and removing the, the ion liquid, you have a membrane film. Oh, chitosan, that uh, as said before, you can deacetylate the chitin to chitosan with fibroxide and then neutralize to make a polyelectrolyte. Uh, and then he, they test it if a combination of two ionic liquids, uh, dimethyl imidazolin chloride and just methyl imidazolin chloride, and here a combination of a main CL with H main CL. And then you, you obtain a um, uh, regenerated chitosan with almost no uh, crystalline peak. And here you can uh, work it and uh, a composted chitosan cellulose. Uh, similar to that kitchen cellulose and also in the form of fibers and maybe in this case even to make clothes. And the last one, the keratin, the, the materials rich in keratin that is feathers, problem chicken feathers and wool, long wool. Uh, in this case, maybe a little more difficult can be obtained because uh, we don't have a, a polymer only with hydrogen bound involved. We have another thing like disulfide bound that's very specific to keratin. We have ionic bounds, we, many proteins have ionic bounds, hydrophobic interactions, but, but uh, it's, it's feed bounds just once um, and they are uh, strong to maintain the stability of the protein. So the focus is to attack these bounds. So there are many uh, work performing that, uh, we have very chemical treatments using reduction or oxidation um, involving sulfate, bisulfate, uh, to thioglycolic acid, uh, uh, sodium hydroxy, ionic liquids, you have some imidazolines here. Uh, similar even to the chitin, even biological and other green process working here. So to compare, you can see here uh, many of this, these ionic liquids using uh, uh, sodium sulfate to, to improve the, the action of in, in this, uh, this feed mount, uh, and you have some solubility, similar solubility, uh, but I still a, a lower one with feathers. Then we another work with feathers here. You have just a little barrel uh, improvement using uh, basically the same but uh, uh, the difference here is choline thioglycolate uh, and the temperature 130 degrees then there is 90 degrees and then an improvement of the solubility a very good improvement and time <laughs> it's very good improvement with time too uh, using wool uh, 
you can see uh, the variability of the temperature and the yield of keratin uh, uh, have uh, uh, a decrease in the yield of a keratin with the rising of the temperature, probably because of degradation of this protein. Uh, in the case of filtratic solvents, we have just a few works. Uh, here I separate two using uh, one using green process to regenerate keratin from feathers with an echoes tepiotetic solvent from, from 2019 using a mixture of uh, sodium acetate with urea and a little water making a solution a good solution uh, pass to a 24 hours, and then a filtration, then adding water as end solvent, and then a, a recovering of keratin. Uh, and here a, a photo uh, comparing the process, traditional process using high concentration rhea and deltatic when the water is added. When Water is added, then the traditional treatment has nothing, it's everything solubilized. And when you add the, the water in the eutetic, you have some recovery in the keratin. And the last one, you use here the, a mixture of lactic acid and cysteine. Uh, then you a dissolution time for a 9% 9, 9 dissolubility was uh, three and a half hour at uh, 95 degrees Celsius, where 22 milligrams of wool was dissolved by one gram of test. Then and make uh, dialysis to remove the salt, uh, probably the test. Uh, nucleization and comparing to the wool, to the traditional, the raw wool. Uh, and then the creatine insulation with the proposed as only requires water, like the other article. And the system lactic acid uh, eutetic, I really never saw. And um, they they show in this article like mass by value, yeah. not molar ratio. In another article, I saw the proposal of this this eutetic like one by one by eight molar ratio and one system eight let cast. Um, but I don't, I didn't see any work about characterization on these deaths. Uh, and remembering that lactic acid have uh, some water in it, 10% uh, water, that is not talking about in this, uh, uh, in this work. It probably have a, a good influence in the solution too. But you can see that that worked. Uh, we have a before and after, uh, before uh, adding water, and after uh, something uh, recovered here. And that's it. Uh, thank you for your attention. I have many, many more ways that can be valued. Uh, my lab work on that, think of that, and using not only ionic lead cell type solvent, but any kind of clean technology to uh, improve and give a, a, a destiny 
to these materials and help someone. If you, if you want to talk to me, if you want to any questions, I can answer. Just email me. We have the eq.ufrj.br or uh, you can see my site uh, uh, cleantech.uq.ufrj.br Thank you once more. Uh, okay, uh, participants, uh, wait for just two, three minutes. Uh, Professor Bernardo may join anytime for handling your queries. I have received two such uh, queries from him, uh, no, from I think one participant, uh, uh, Sunita Rajamani. Sunita Rajamani is not, the, is, he, is are you there in this participant list? As I have found your query from YouTube. I don't see her here, don't know. So probably uh, we wait for uh, Professor Bernardo. We take, just don't go away, huh? just wait for two minutes. He's facing some problem in connecting through these teams. So I have noted your questions. He will respond to them. Yeah, welcome. Yeah, welcome. Hello, Professor Bernardo. Here with us. Here with us. Hello, hello. Finally. Yeah, I can hear you. <laughs> Hi. Uh, yeah. Uh, yeah. Good night for you, for everyone. Good morning for me. Okay. So uh, it was. It is great to have you here. So we have some questions uh, in this last lecture. One or two questions. Okay. So the question. So shall I repeat the question? Or you got it from the? You can make the questions. If I yeah. know, I, I try to answer. It. Okay. Okay. Uh, uh, it says that in the rice straw conversion table. The data mentions that the anti-solvent is 0.1 normal sodium hydroxide. So will the acidic polonium ionic liquids not undergo any kind of acid-base reaction among themselves? Yeah, probably with or, the, this type, you're going to be neutralizing, yeah. But the sodium hydroxide is a, a very good unsolvent for lightning things, uh, phenolic things to make them more uh, soluble. And then you can precipitate cellulose or other polymers uh, more uh, efficiently. But yes, it can be a problem with, if you have uh, organic acids as uh, hydrogen bond donors or as 
é, é, component of ionic liquids. Okay. Maybe okay. a restriction okay. there. <laughs> Maybe in, in this case, it's better to use acetone or just water. I see. Okay, so any other questions from the participants? Ah. Okay, I don't think there is any other questions. Uh, so it was it was nice to have here, and uh, two more lectures are are to be provided. So no problem. If you need me, just call me. Okay, fine. Okay, so fine. Uh, participants, if you have any queries, you can mail uh, him directly or to me on the YouTube dashboard. So this will be clarified by the speaker later. Okay. So yes, Professor Ribeiro, we will then go ahead with the other two lectures and uh, we will soon meet you. And thanks again for accepting this request in joining this particular short term course. So we start with the second lecture of uh, Professor Bernardo. The second lecture is on the enzyme catalysis and organocatalysis. So I'll ask Dr. Nayak to kindly start the second lecture. Hi, I am Professor Bernardo Dias from the School of Chemistry, Federal University of Rio de Janeiro. And that's the, my third lecture in the Spark Shot Tour course about enzyme and organocatalysis using ionic liquids and catalytic solvents. So, to talk about enzymes and organocatalysis, we have to talk about Hi, I am Professor Bernardo Dias from the School of Chemistry, Federal University of Rio de Janeiro, and that's the, my third lecture. Yeah, Dr. Nayak, is there any problem? Okay, okay, fine. Hi, I am Professor Bernardo Dias from the School of Chemistry, Federal University of Rio de Janeiro, and that's the, my third lecture in the Spark Shot Tour course about enzyme and organocatalysis using ionic liquids and catalytic solvents. So, to talk about enzymes and organ catalysis, we have to talk about catalysis first. Uh, catalysis is just a way to improve the rate of the chemical reaction with a catalyst. And 
know being consumed during the action of these catalysts. So you have the two substrates A and B, have a bounding of them to generate a product and a gener regeneration of this cuts in the next reaction. Simple. Uh, what's the advantage of that? Some reactions can occur uh, just in this way, a slow way, but can occur. So you use the catalyst uh, in a way to uh, decrease uh, the activation energy to make this reaction possible. So when you get together two substrates, two reagents, you have a activated complex. Uh, normally this energy is very high. So the catalyst make it easy to, to make it happen. <laughs> And um, well, um, enzymes. What can I do with it? Enzymes are highly specific proteins. Uh, they act efficiently under mild conditions, pH and temperature, which are required to preserve the functionality and integrity of bio biological systems. They have uh, active site where the substrate can bound and then the reaction occurs. So why not just enzyme catalysis? Why biocatalysis? Is, is there another uh, way to make biocatalysis without enzymes? Yeah, um, uh, microorganisms can uh, do that too. So, but in this lecture, we talk just about enzymes. Enzymes can be applied in many, many things. Household care is the top one, but you can use in textile industries, open paper industry, biofuels, making pharmaceuticals, cosmetics, and food. Many applications in food, like dairy, uh, bread, beverage, starch, and sugar. So I can example here that uh, the first one with the small yellow circle is the bread, common bread, and the other one is the bread with enzymes. You see, it can be a bigger one. And the market, the estimated market with enzymes is huge. It's uh, 14. Uh, and not nine billions of dollars until 2027. You have some companies, the top company on, on this sector is Novozymes with 48% uh, market share. Then we have DSM, Dupont, uh, Amano, Abenzymes, Basso, so you have uh, important companies, uh, known co companies in this area. Okay, where where uh, test solvents, ionic liquids, uh, combine with biocatalysis, uh, why they are important? Uh, biocatalysis can use enzymes, uh, can make main types of reactions uh, using uh, monophasic system or phasic systems and reactions uh, common in, in organic sy synthesis but now more uh, 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 the range of applications increased and then you can use that as an option alternative to many molecular solvents uh, to think of that, you have to think uh, in many factors. One of them, 
the important factor here is the water. Water has to be in the right amount in the structure of the enzyme. Why? Because uh, there is an activation of this enzyme by the increase of uh, in polarity and structural flexibility in this active site. Okay? But too much water can cause enzyme aggregation. So, can uh, have a difficult substrate fusion, maybe an enzyme inactivation, and in the case of ionic liquids, you can possibly hydrolyze them. Uh, remember that of uh, the ionic liquids with BF4 or BF6 anions. Interactions. What about what about the interactions of ionic liquids and water? Uh, the rotation of water allows them to strip off the essential water that is associated with the enzyme leading to enzyme deactivation. That's a problem. Uh, penetration into the microechos phase surrounding the enzyme molecules and get direct contact with the enzyme, thereby changing the protein dynamics, the protein conformation or the enzyme active center, other option of interaction, instead of uh, stealing the water just uh, interacting with the surround of the environment. Uh, the third option, interaction with the substrates and products, either by direct reactions with them or by altering their passion between the bulk yield phase and the micro phase that surrounds the enzyme molecule. Okay, it's free problem. Uh, why I, I, I want to, to work with ionic liquids? Because they can, uh, ionic liquids in, in iotetic solvents can perform or simulate, even with possible problems, uh, reactions or yield of these reactions much better than molecular solvents. Of course, each case has to be evaluated, not all of them. Here an example of the influence of water, uh, dependence of the hydrolytic activity of penicillin spansolipase in exane, and in uh, this ionic liquid, the C4 mean, uh, it's the 1 butyl 3 3 methyl midazolium. Uh, P PF6, uh, hexafluorophosphate. Uh, you can see here that the quantity of water uh, that improved the, the, the activity of the enzyme is so narrow with exane here in this circle dot and have to be probably uh, 0.5% to, to better uh, activity. And in the case of uh, the mean PF6, uh, you have here two, two, between two and two and dot five percent and you have eight times more activity in the presence of this ionic liquid. Uh, it's another case, another parameter is the ions concentration uh, called known as Hofmeister effect which at low salt concentrations up to 0 0.01 molar uh, 10 millimolar you have only electrostatic interactions and higher than that we have Hofmeister ion effect so 
uh, enzymes stabilized by cosmotropic anions in calotropic cations and stabilized by the inverse, the calotropic anions in cosmotropic cations. So, uh, uh, C1 mean, C2 mean, and any butyl pyridinium are calotropic cations. So, good, they can uh, stabilize enzymes. Just combine with cosmotropic anions. Uh, in, where is larger imidazolium and ammonium cations with longer alkyl chains are more cosmotropic cations. They interact more with the hydrophobic parts of the proteins and stabilize them. Then you have here some anions that are uh, cosmotropic. So these anions are sulfate, uh, phosphate, hydrogen phosphate, acetate, fluorate. And then you have anions not so good. Chloride, bromide, nitrate, nitrate, uh, perchlorate, thiocyanate. So we have to Think of that to help to stabilize. So you can maybe estimate the, the, the stability of this enzyme by this rule. The presence of cosmotropic cation C form means some enzymes can present their activities in a reverse of mass order of the anions. You can have to make a balance with the C4 just a little more hydrophobic with the imidazolium. Um, some other interactions can overlap the Hofmeister effects. Uh, the case of pure ionic liquids, they have a structure, a supramolecular structure, huge with eight bounding network. So if a small amount of water uh, don't give chills to the structure, they still there. And uh, then uh, no no interact so much with the, the enzyme. Uh, another fact uh, the surface pH of the enzyme uh, they are related with the ionizing states of the amino acid residues of the enzyme's active site. Uh, not, so, not only the enzyme's active site, the enzyme at all, but active site is more important. Uh, and dependent of and the salt concentration in, on the ionic species following the Hopmite series. Example. Holding a higher polarizability than uh, chloride, uh, anion chloride or thiocyanate has a strong interaction with the protein uh, surface, resulting in the accumulation of a plus around the protein surface and turn a reduction in the surface pH, affecting the action mechanisms of enzymes active site. Of course because they are too much 8 plus around them. Another effect, net charge of the enzyme. Uh, salt or any impurity in the buffer solution. Change in the buffer pH following the hop mass series, which could affect the activity and stability of the enzyme and the buffer solution accordingly. Of course, because it has some kind of impurity in the buffer solution. Uh, active site and catalytic mechanism of the enzyme. Uh, strong interactions with the functional groups on the surface of the enzyme. 
change in the enzyme's activities both chemically and physically, resulting in a modification of the enzyme's catalytic activity and even in its catalytic mechanisms. Yeah, you have to 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 alter too much uh, to to make that. No? So for consequence, kind of strong interactions. So let's see some examples here. We see almost everyone have direct uh, relation to half my series, uh, unless here the lipase with annual effect reversed. So in the case using uh, C4 mean as ketchup you have a uh, reversed as we talked later uh, 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 before another parameter is the hydrophobicity and the way you can think about it is uh, in relation to log p log p is the logarithm of the partition coefficients of the solvent in a octan in an octanal and octanal water mixture. So you may uh, uh, evaluate the distribution of this uh, solvent or material uh, in this mixture, saturated mixture, uh, measure the concentration between them. So High log P, such as exane, that has a log P of 3.5, you have a more hydrophobic and more favorable for enzymatic reactions. So log P uh, higher than 3 or 4 is good for enzymes. Then log P, low log P, such as ethanol. Uh, that have a log P uh, equal to a negative minus uh, 0 0.24. That is solvents that stripping off the essential water from the enzymes. Uh, uh, essential water, I don't know uh, if uh, everyone knows, but the enzyme so that huge 3D protein uh, to not make all that compact, uh, just a, a small sphere. Uh, we have so many interactions between the, the molecules uh, there, but you have water small quantity of what each type of enzyme have uh, a, a right amount of water to make it active. If, if you steal that water, just the whole structure collapse. The whole structure not function well. You can uh, change that water for another molecule that is strategy to many types of organisms to survive in harsh conditions like desert like uh, uh, thermal fountains but you you have to put something there to make uh, the 3d structure, a type of flexible enough, uh, rigid enough, make it difficult to, uh, to adapt a, a, a certain uh, reactions medium, uh, instead maybe you have some thermostability but you have not some uh, reaction flexibility. So you have to be there if 
because that is essential for it's important. So I only click it. Uh, not like solvents, but I only click here. Don't have good values for log p. Uh, instead of that, log p is not used more for evaluated hydrophobicity of ionic liquids because this value is very negative. Uh, but you can have hydrophobic key uh, way. The example is using anions with PF6 and NTF2. They are hydrophobic. And they make two phases for uh, but still have log p values low. So you have another parameters that I think uh, other lectures can could talk and I want to say nothing about that. But you can just uh, evaluate the PC comparing uh, values in the literature. So high hydrophobicity of ionic leads and normally uh, means a high length of the alkyl group from cation. Promoting a higher enzyme activity but a lower selectivity since more free water molecules could act as nucleophile receptors in transtrification reaction. Longer OQ chains may behave as surfactants and act to stop Yeah, surfactants is not uh, uh, a good thing to enzymes. Just in small concentrations of surfactant can act good, but high normally uh, inhibit the enzyme. Here, an example of that, we have the effect of the opioid side chain of the midazole ionic liquids using QF4 on the activity of uh, the lipase from constant Antarctica B, known as Novozin 435 uh, in the hydrolysis of disaster. In a acre solution containing 20 or 25% of ionic liquids. And in acylation of this free 3 methyl silyl ethyl with vinyl acetate. So here, uh, increasing the alkyl chain, alkyl side chain of midazolium. Uh, no, nothing for hydrolysis. Uh, but when you think in the acylation, it makes a, a very big difference. And it, even that, using PF6 is the very result. So if you use, in this case, a uh, uh, canyon uh, as more easy. Other factors that you influence in the enzyme reactions, the viscosity, because of uh, an ionic is usually higher than that of molecular solvents and may control the enzyme activity by affecting the mass transfer limitations in reaction systems, of course. On the other hand, high viscosity of ionic leads may also offer a stabilizing effect, slowing down the migration of protein domains from the active conformation to the inactive one. Yeah, but uh, you, if, if it's too much, nothing happens to uh, nucleophilicity. Nucleophilicity. More nucleophilic ionic lead anions like nitrate, uh, deflate, acetate, 
uh, another sulfate here, a sulfate here, would coordinate more strongly to the positively charged sites in the enzyme stru structure, causing conformational changes. Therefore, the use of ionic leads with low anion nucleophilicity is essential to enzyme activity. Uh, hydrogen bond basicity. So, ionic leads anions with a strong 8 bond basicity as acyl sulfate in treating lactate may cause association of hydrogen bonds that maintain the structural integrity of the alpha helices and beta sheets, which in turn will cause the protein to unfold, solving the enzyme. Yeah, they can be solved with maybe even if they are immobilized. Believe me. Interaction between ionic lead and buffer enzymatic reactions are often performed in aqueous buffer solution, uh, except lipases, uh, industrial enzymes in this case. Uh, addition of increased amounts of ionic liquid sometimes causes precipitates of unknown composition. Yeah, uh, it's mixed with this, this item have also correlation with this item of impurity. Uh, unlike conventional organic solvents, most of the result groups prepare the ionic liquids themselves. This may be the reason why, with normally the same ionic liquid, different results are sometimes obtained, an example by presence of allied and unreact organic salts. Well, make ionic liquids, it's not easy. <laughs> it's... it's uh, Maybe a week work uh, of making the, the ionic liquids, preparing them, and then purifying or changing the anion. It's it's more difficult. I, I vividly prefer to work with photetic solvents. Uh, complex ionic liquids from metal ions. Some enzymes Require metal ions such as cobalt, manganese, or zinc for the activity. If these are removed by the ionic liquids, uh, an activation immediately. Uh, yes, it's a kind of big problem. Uh, many uh, uh, enzymes have uh, ions uh, in the core of the enzyme. So, yeah. A problem. Here are some examples of using uh, nearly dry ionic liquids, so with minimal water. We have many, many reactions possible here using uh, just looking with this kind of microorganisms here is lipase in many cases. Um, we have keep, um, kind of protease and others. Another type of examples in this case with carbohydrates. Uh, here cellulases, uh, alpha amylases, uh, beta glucosidases, just uh, using Ionic liquids basically in intersolium here, uh, but with relations with the previous uh, lecture, the processing of biomass. Here we use the biomass pre treated uh, to transform this in glucose. Uh, and then may make another product. So here you have enzymatic hydrolysis of this biomass and, and transform it to glucose. Another example here, but here is to enzymatic resolution and separation of 
was Hasenki sec alcohols. So you have uh, selectivity, financial selectivity of this Hasenki uh, mixture uh, favoring the, the separation in two different isomers. So they had so many works on that using lipase to cow B is the lipase of Candontactica B, lipase B of Candontactica. Uh, but when you see uh, right uh, uh, written uh, uh, cow B, this problem is the uh, free form, liquid form, not the immobilized one. Is Nova Sem 4, uh, 4, 3, 5. Here another example using immobilized lipase, uh, ionic lictin substrates, reaction, and then adding the uh, unsolvent here, in this case, uh, a solvent to extract the products and recycle the, the, the ionic liquids. Uh, but ether is not so good to be green, right? The first work uh, doing associating enzymes and industrial enzymes with ethetic solvents is from the uh, Professor Kazlauskas uh, from University of Minnesota, his group. Uh, you see here the the comparison with uh, many eutetic solvents uh, uh, based on choline chloride and based in, in, uh, in the ammonium type uh, and comparison with the molecular solvent toluene in this reaction, uh, 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 transterification uh, using ethyl valerate and butanol and this there is uh, this lipase is here is very known uh, commercially very known from candida antarctica i think here is porcine uh, pancreas i think it's pancreas and you here see that the, the efficiency of the conversion of this reaction at 60 degrees Celsius is very high, is very uh, comparable to the toluene. Using here, uh, choline chloride glycerol, um, choline chloride urea, uh, this one here with uh, ammonium type with glycerol, everything is good uh, with different types of lipases here we, the i here is the immobilized calbi calbi free calbi uh, probably free kawa uh, have two types of these lipases of the same microorganisms and here pcl and don't have any good but you see that is comparable. So also is this work is uh, is uh, a mark. Uh, you have to use this in first time. Then show the conversion of another reaction, the aminolysis of ethyl valerate with one butylamine uh, with the immobilized type of Candida antarctica lipase type B. So you see here that uh, choline chloride urea and choline chloride glycerol has uh, a better produ product speed. Uh, in one hour, it's achieved here higher than 90% of conversion, and toluene is just uh, almost 80%. That's that the same result of the choline chloride urea, meaning that uh, in these reactions, in these two reactions, 
you can uh, change, uh, go away with stall and in and use your tactic. So it's good results. It's stimulating. Well, uh, so you have to study some aspects and using eutetic solvent for enzymatic biocatalysis. So first, first aspect, first factor is the solvent concentration. You can go to 100% eutetic. The enzyme don't 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 want that. The enzyme is going to be inhibited. So you can see here in the in this graphic, high concentration of this, uh, low activity of enzyme, and maybe uh, some high stability. What's the meaning? Meaning that he, the enzyme can maintain the, this low activity for a long time. Uh, and this meaning that some quantity of water is necessary to maintain enzymatic activity besides decrease the viscosity of eutetic solvent. Yeah, the presence of water, you, you gonna, you're going to be uh, decreasing the viscosity. But uh, uh, each enzyme, each kind of each type of enzyme needs some minimal quantity of water to maintain their uh, uh, 3D structure, okay? So uh, it's it's going to depend on the type of the enzyme. Here in this example, it is using alpha aminoacyl beta glucose D uh, in the deglycosylation of spiridine, a type of phenolic compound. So you see here. Uh, choline urea uh, after 40% no activity uh, glycerol maintain so better uh, after 80% no activity and I I recall after 60% no activity uh, we see in e this in my lab too Here the, the presence, the, the effect of the water content. Here in the first graphic, you see the effect on uh, subtilisine, it's a protease, uh, I immobilized protease, and percbutanol, a mo molecular solvent. You see a small, uh, low activity, and then using uh, the same enzyme with acetate, choline, and glycerol. Uh, a small uh, increase in the activity and high uh, increase in the, in the selectivity. selectivity. Uh, then use these immobilized enzyme in choline chloride glycerol and the activity in increase a lot here and meaning 10 times uh, and selectivity is good too and then comparing to free enzyme no immobilization you have a, also a, a good activity uh, the advantage of using an immobilization method is to re reuse the enzyme. And then it's this, this reaction is the transesterification of N-acetyl-L-phenylalanine ethyl ester and 1-propanol. Uh, so, depending of the quantity of water and the type of the uh, eutetic solvents influence very much in, in the activity and the selectivity of this reaction. So just another.
we can see the effect on pH. We have uh, different uh, different enzyme activity of different pH is normal. E you see an increase here using eutetic solvent. Uh, in this reaction, you, s you see the, the reaction between bucoderia sepacea lipase uh, hydrolyzing uh, paranitrophenyl palmitate under uh, phosphate buffer, meaning he, 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 he EAC that we see before is NNDETIL ethanol ammonium chloride. Okay. You can see here also the effects of temperature. Yeah, a very uh, better increase here. The thermal stability of the enzyme is, is increased using these two eutetic solvents. So you go to uh, optimum uh, aspect with the methanol. Uh, maybe 35 and 45 degrees Celsius to with choline chloride and ethylene glycol to uh, 50 to 70. So that's a good increase, a good increasing the thermal stability. Uh, other, another aspect here is the viscosity. High viscosity uh, is a great uh, affect the mass transfer. So if the diffusion of substrate or diffusion of products uh, generating the in this reaction are affected, uh, the, the, the reaction rate is decreased as well. So you have very difficult problems, uh, majorly with the immobili immobilizing enzymes. Uh, you can be a key hydrogen bond formation. Uh, high formation of hydrogen bonds, for example, high number of hydroxyl groups in their chain, you in, in, uh, relate to high enzymatic stability and activity. Uh, and another point is the byproduct formation. You have to be careful using some kinds of eutetics that have the HBD group uh, as alcohol or polyol because you can be a, 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 a side effect here that you sterification you gonna be this HBG group too. Uh, example here is a uh, choline chloride with glycerol using lipase and sterification reaction with organic acids mainly fatty acids can promote the formation of monoglycerides. Here, just the compilation of this all this data we have here many uses of lipases, uh, majorly in uh, 435. Uh, probably I calbi here is this ozone 435, it's a very known uh, lipase immobilizing lipase in the market. Uh, and here are other enzymes besides lipase uh, that have been used in reactions, probably aqueous solutions of eutetic solvents, but in, in some cases, uh, the lipase is <laughs> as well, but it's an ad a advance in the in the in this area to use eutetic solvents with enzyme. Um, to end my my presentation I just going to present here a result of my group 
uh, with Professor Isabel Marruchu, uh, using here the, the influence of beta in and choline based deutetic solvent on lipase activity. Uh, I just want uh, to emphasize here the hyperactivation effect that can be present. Uh, here you see the the it's a relative activity percentage, meaning that 100% is the basis, the standard, with no eutetic, and then we achieve uh, 2,000 relative activity use uh, colonic chloride urea with immobilized lipase, in this case thermomyces lanuginosus lipase, that's a lipase very good to hydrolyze things. So in this case, hydrolyzing uh, paranitrophenyl laureate in, uh, in, uh, with, uh, in phosphate buffer, 37 degrees Celsius for 10 seconds. And there's a big difference when it, this enzyme is mobilized and free. And we go just until 20%. Uh, besides that, uh, the, the material of the support of uh, immobilization just disintegrates. So, but it's demonstrated here the the hyperactivation effect. Another type of catalysis is using small organic molecules like amino acids. So you have two types of organic catalysis. One using a covalent catalysis. Yeah, you know, another using non-covalent catalysis. So, examples of covalent catalysis is nucleophilic catalysis, type of here of uh, acyl transfer reactions by Lewis basic amines and phosphines. Uh, amine catalysis, for example, all the reactions, micro additions and others. Here you have enamine and imino ions, intermediates, as a sample, and the case of non-covalent catalysis, uh, we have activation of carbonyl compounds towards cyclic additions by uh, hydrogen bonding to so amidinium cations, ureas, diodes, or phase transfer catalysis formation of chiral ion pairs. Uh, example here, nulase, nitronate. Over here, more examples, we have proline as the one of the major examples, proline, proline, or their derivatives, uh, quinine, uh, cinchonidine, uh, reas, tyreas, another alkaloids, uh, peptides, uh, derivatives of uh, ketones. So you have many daily molecules uh, that can have some kind of uh, catalytic activity. So where ionic liquids uh, getting there? Uh, they can act as solvents, as any other reaction. You have organic catalysts and the ionic liquids as solvents. So you have here the proline using the mean PF6 to make this reaction, our reaction. Here another one using guanidine ionic liquid uh, and as proline to make this uh, another aromatic uh, reaction, uh, aldo, aldo reaction. Another option, the use of ionic liquids as catalysts. You can see here the uh, collinium prolinate 
as catalyst in this auto reaction uh, with some selectivity on, in this product. Uh, you can see here uh, four hydroxyproline uh, the derivative organic catalysts. You have then as ionic mix two. Uh, they can be the a catalyst magnetic catalyst using uh, iron as anion that can be supported or not. You see here a uh, 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 iron oxide uh, nanoparticle as magnetic nanoparticle uh, coated with silica and then link it with ionic liquids uh, to make a, a supported catalyst. Here you can see the, these ionic liquids supported in another uh, silica, but not magnetic, uh, covalent and cord onto a highly cross-linked polysyrene resin. Uh, or you can uh, uh, promote a peel, uh, a polyionic liquid as catalyst here in, the, in this asymmetric album reaction. In this case, polyvalidin chloride immobilizes ionic liquids with proline. And you use the eutetic solvents too. As solvents, here, microaddition, use uh, colloidal chloride, fructose, and water, if I think clean. And here we have uh, colloidal chloride, urea, and water with proline. We have big amount of water. That's okay. And as catalysts, you see here, or using choline chloride with urea, with different reaction reagents, and make different uh, products. Uh, in this case, we have uh, the use of the reaction uh, in the presence of choline chloride and uh, zinc chloride. Here you can see the use of a type of solvent supported uh, SBA15. That's kind of uh, mesoporous silica, silica. Uh, link it with this eutetic uh, between any methyl pyrrolidone and zinc chloride. Uh, and I don't found, I didn't find any, any type of work using uh, eutetic solvents based polymer, the deep eutetic monomer to make a polymer that have uh, any kind of catalytic activity until now. But I found some kind of uh, linked with uh, iron oxide, then linked with this uh, silica to make uh, magnetic nanoparticles linked with colline chloride uh, reacting with the hydroxyl group of the colline. Uh, to make it happen, this synthesis. And the last one is the use of this eutetic, the zinc chloride with urea to the glycolysis of peat. Peat, P -A -A -T -E -E -T, is the polyethylene terephthalate. The huge problem in the world. 
So you make iPhone glypho with this catalyst and turn this polymer in oligomer. This BHET, this hydroxyethyl triphthalate. It's a beautiful, huge thing. And my group is working on that too. And mixing with the enzyme, enzymatic hydrolysis, combining them. So, thanks for your attention. The, the field of catalysis using enzymes and using organic catalysis, catalysis is vast. Many things can be done yet. So you have, if you have any doubts, you can mail me, um, Bernardo, uh, arroba iki, iki.uf.rj.br, or see our site, cleantech.iq.ufrj.br. Thank you very much. Okay. Okay, participants, if you have any question, then you can write in the chat box. If you have any question, you write it in the chat box. I will forward it to Professor Bernardo. Hi. You have any question? Fine. So then we move on to the last lecture by Professor Bernardo again. So um, this last lecture is with the interaction with environment. So the solvents, how they in interact with the environment. So this, we will conclude this particular short term session. So we, I request all the participants to stay till the end. We will have some discussion regarding the way forward and any suggestions from your side. OK, then I request Prof uh, Dr. Papu Naik to please start the last lecture. Hi, I am Professor Bernardo Dias from School of Chemistry at the Federal University of Rio de Janeiro. And now we're going to talk about interactions with environment in this part short term course uh, involving ionic nucleus and eutectic solvents. To talk about environment, we had to think about our planet, the Earth. Our planet has been very endured in, in this century. We have almost 98% of salty water in the oceans. We only 2% of fresh water that can be easily uh, drunk. So you have to valorize all our water resources. We cannot uh, continue to, to pollute them. More than 80% of sewage in developing countries is discharged untreated, polluting rivers, lakes, and coastal areas. It's, it's not acceptable anymore. Not to say. So, to avoid that, our studies about ionic liquid and plastic solvents uh, should not contribute to the pollution, to the contamination of the water, of the soil. Uh, in our benefits, 
after the solvent the ionic leak is not going to pollute the air because there are properties of uh, negligible type, type of pressure. But we have to ensure that we don't have contamination with water and with soil. So, to, to remember that, we have to remember uh, the link of this pollution in the world with the rising of green chemistry. The green chemistry, all 12 principles of green chemistry, uh, described by Anastas and Warren in their book Green Chemistry and Theory and Practice uh, in 1998. They, they organized the idea of a better chemistry in 12 principles. And our topic, ionic liquid and eutastic solvents, uh, they are inserted in these five principal safer solvents and auxiliaries. Uh, so they can be not safer. It had to be no toxic to environment, no toxic to human health, to animal health. So we have to test it. Well, uh, 20 years later, uh, now we not necessarily have 12 principles, but a whole periodic table with ideas inspired in that 12 principles, also organized by Paul Anastas, and now with Julie Zieberman. Uh, they present this periodic table and International Symposium of Democracy in France, uh, explaining here how they can mix green and sustainable ideas and one big uh, figure, one big periodic table. And then there are a specific item here, element here, the 43 ionic liquids non-volatile non volatile solvents that is correlated with the uh, aerotetic solvent. Um, and then here we have other good ideas using uh, uh, benign metabolites, degradable materials. Uh, so thinking about not only uh, the toxicity, the safety, but also in the, the after. After you use this material, this solvent, uh, the environment has to metabolize them, has to make innocuous. So the idea of this uh, lecture today is to talk about the interaction with the environment with this solvents uh, uh, focusing in the toxicity and the biodegradation, the biodegradability of the solvents. So you can see here uh, this ionic lithic as an example in this article can be uh, released in water as suspended particle, uh, as dissolved as dissolved natural organic matter, uh, can be a 
have a take in the fishes, invertebrates, uh, microorganisms, and can be degraded by them. Uh, be suspended in water or deposition and absorbed, absorbed in the soil. So many things can be happen here. So we, we, when you think about toxicity, you have to think about the tests that you can realize in the lab to verify them. So you can uh, a big evaluation using vertebrate animals, uh, mammals, fish, invertebrate animals. Uh, and here a snail and a zooplankton. You can think only in cells. Uh, you have many kinds of cells you can test, animal cells, human cells, uh, and the microorganisms, fungi, fungi bacteria, uh, you have some kind of bioluminescence assays, uh, and you can test also algae and higher plants. In this case, you verify the growth inhibition of this material. Uh, you can see that in the bacteria and fungi too. Uh, and the, in the animals, you verify the acute toxicity. Uh, uh, how many of them stay alive? Uh, in the lab, and we're going to talk more about that, you can see some colorful tests like MTTSA to see the cytotoxicity. And more, speci more uh, specific uh, is be, uh, or be the enzyme inhibition with acetylcholinesterase. So this enzyme here is uh, related to our uh, is it a primary target of uh, or organophosphorus compounds so uh, they catalyze the breakdown of acetylcholine and other choline esters that function as neurotransmitter so if they are inhibited, uh, they, uh, they stop our synaptic transmission and we have very uh, health problems. So, what the, the, the liter literature said about uh, the correlation of the structure of ionoclids with toxicity. Uh, some types here are more recommended to, to use with no or low toxicity. So you can use here some kind of cations like uh, ammonium uh, derivatives, amino uh, acid derivatives, ocolinium, anidinium, uh, protic based ionic liquids, etc. And not recommended is the phosphonium, pyridinium, imidazolium, pyrrolidinium, and imidazolium have, uh, have known that a long time. Uh, some side chains recommended here are the one with functional groups and short polar chain and not recommended they are long hydrophobic alkyl chain they, they can act like uh, a surfactant compound and interact directly with the phospholipid uh, membranes of the of the cells so you can promote 
the permeabilization of the cells or just the rupture of the cell. And the anions recommended are uh, amino acids, uh, methane sulfonate, alkyl sulfonate, halides, uh, and the others. And not recommended are calotropic anions, remover, less electric, uh, and others that have fluorine. Remembering that uh, some types of problems can be associated with these not recommended ionic liquids, like, uh, like I said, uh, cellular membrane destabilization, uh, swelling of cell membrane, morphological instruction of lipid layer, uh, response of antioxidant system, altering them, so uh, superoxidismutase, catalase, and others, overproduction of uh, radical oxygen species that is directly related with the, the problems, inhibitions here, uh, or activations here of uh, superoxidismutase or other oxidase here. Increase of mitochondrial permeability, the same idea of the problem in cellular membrane. Lipid peroxidation, because it's an SX of uh, ROS. Uh, DNA, DNA, DNA damage, damage, oxidative cell damage, and induction of apoptosis. So, uh, even with this kind of problems, uh, the response, the tolerance of ionic liquids is different, it depends of, on the biological system. So, you see here a snail and a uva lactuca that has a higher plant that has a high tolerance to the one octyl free methylmidazole bromide that has here a, a, a not so long chain but a, a kind of hydrophobic chain here linked to the imidazole and then you can see this tolerance going down to some types of microorganisms or the more sensible ones. Yes, we can see more examples you evaluating the ionic lead toxicity on bacteria. Uh, majorly the influence of alkyl side chain length. So you increase the chain length and then the MIC, the minimum inhibitory concentration uh, uh, decrease. And this value is the value that uh, you still have a, some growth and uh, if you make another test with uh, uh, a little higher concentration, then no growth of the bacteria. So, the, because this is minimal. So, low is this value. Uh, high, the power of antimicrobial activity of this material. So you can see here that the increase of the side chain length uh, uh, promotes uh, a lowest value of MIC. And here with the Escherichia coli, and here with Klebsiella pneumiae, with Staphylococcus aureus, with 
and with staphylococcus epidermidis. And these go on with other examples in this table. And, and we can see here in the increasing to C16, C18, a little different result, uh, probably the, uh, due to uh, formation of uh, surfactant and cells. And uh, then you can uh, think about a uh, different behavior. Uh, maybe we, we, we don't see that here, but maybe in some tests you can uh, visualize a, a different uh, behavior between the type of bacteria. Uh, each bacteria has their problem, but you can uh, uh, agrupate them in two big uh, groups. Uh, gram-negative bacteria and gram-positive bacteria that have different differences in the uh, the structure of the cell wall. Uh, the cell wall of the gram-negative bacteria have more barriers, so more difficult to to disrupt. Here another example, in this case in fungi, you can see Candida tropicalis and albicans, uh, Saccharomyces cerevisiae, uh, Rhodotora rubra. Uh, and the same idea to evaluate the alkylcytin length. And you have similar results, the increase of the cytin length, you have uh, a decrease in the meek value. Uh, even when you have here uh, uh, others uh, group uh, linked to the site alkyl site chain. Uh, and here we can see the effect of them on the conidia of Aspergillus nidulans. So you can see here the first one, the top one, is sanin solution control. In the middle, you have the effect on the using methyl tributyl phosphonyl chloride. And the bottom one, the octyl tributyl phosphonyl chloride. You see that the membrane here and the cell wall have some alterations in that structure. A big question is the is there any interaction of ionic leaks with DNA? Yeah, they they have depending on the ionic liquid. The same idea here uh, can be related to DNA. Uh, so you have some tests that were made, uh, and many of them can maintain routine, maintain the, the native conformation of DNA. So you have here uh, some midazolium being, being tested. Uh, you have high extraction. Uh, here we have collinium uh, hydrogen phosphate uh, stabilizing DNA. They interact with the phosphate groups of DNA. So, if you have a, a good ionic liquid for protein, they are good to DNA. And with all this idea, with toxicity, uh, you can uh, make a, a new kind of product. You can think, well, if they are toxic to macroorganisms, they can be antimicrobial. You no, know, you have many types of antimicrobial in food products, in cosmetic products. So there is 
uh, some think of uh, of that already. Some of them of ammonium family using benzalconium, ketium, using uh, another colinium ketium uh, that have that quality to, 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 to antimicrobial. And then you can think about inazolium, peridinium, morpholinium, but then you can have to think a, a little uh, less uh, because they are good antimicrobial, but probably they are good in, in promoting health problems too. So be careful. Uh, my group have some work on that here as example. We try to uh, evaluate um, the toxicity of ionic liquids, but not to uh, determine the MIC, the minimum inhibition concentration. Uh, instead of that, we try to and determine the maximum non-tox concentration. Why? We use the microdilution method. We have the 96 well plate to with a, a dye to, to evaluate the viability of the microorganisms because we we wanted to make a previous study about structure fermentation. So, uh, what about the concentration of the, the solvent, the quantity of the solvent that I can uh, add to the, my bioreactor to promote the extraction of the product that uh, is going to be generated here without promoting uh, uh, a theft of these microorganisms, without uh, inhibit or inhibit too much the growth of them. So we try to study that before, try to make a uh, extractive fermentation. Then we have uh, some results. We try some uh, representative uh, microorganisms. So we have some uh, gram positive bacteria, actinobacteria, gram negative bacteria, yeasts, uh, filamentous fun fungi. And then we have uh, evaluated uh, uh, many ionic liquids. So we have uh, uh, C2 mean CL, C2 mean ethyl sulfate, C2 mean ethyl sulfate. And then the, the results is very varied here. So you can use uh, some have a uh, good resistance, a good tolerance, so Bacillus vitilis, uh, Pseudomonas aeruginosa, uh, Yahoga lipolítica, Aspergillus brasiliensis, e Rhizopsis orizai have uh, a good tolerance to these, these ionic liquids. And the, the anion here have a same influence, the, the sulfate uh, can be, uh, but it's very difficult to make any correlation here. You see here that Pseudomonas aeruginosa have a good result to anion chloride uh, and Rhizopsis orizai too. And then when you see here, for Bacillus subtilis, uh, the anion ethyl sulfate uh, has the best result. So uh, maybe 
difference in cell well or cell wall have some some meaning here. But, uh, have to study each case. Here we test the collinium acetate, collinium chloride, and phosphony one, and you have results not so good to collinium acetate. Uh, so so here for yeast and peramatous fungi in, in the case of polyno chloride and phosphonyl no really no not good and then we have hydrophobicus ones using here and only uh, uh, filamento fungi, Vegilus brasiliensis, have some good results. Uh, a Pseudomonas aeruginosa have uh, medial results uh, with C4 mean and TF2. But uh, comparing with the first three ones, I only click it, uh, they have the worst results. They are probably more interacting with the cell wall and membrane. So, uh, first of all, is I, I want to present about toxicity. Try to to answer these questions. So, is are dipeltex solvent benign or toxic? is the first work about the this this topic uh, is published in uh, 2013 by the Hyland group and then in this work uh, we'd be very happy if we uh, high end group uh, verified the influence of eutetics on bacteria inhibition using just a, a, a petri dish. Uh, they put the bacteria to grow 24 hours in a specific agar medium and then put a uh, cotton no, a paper a paper disc on the center and embedded it with the eutetics and with the uh, component the pure component so we have here in this table uh, okay. first of first is the eutex uh, choline chloride glycerol then glycerol and just choline chloride and the same thing for the next is here with the ethylene glycol, triethylene glycol and urea and uh, four types of bacteria uh, two uh, gram positive bacteria and two gram negative bacteria that have some uh, difference in the cell wall cell wall composition and the uh, gram negative have uh, more more uh, more layers in the cell wall uh, you have uh, lipopolysaccharide then uh, 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 a second uh, plasmatic membrane, phospholipid membrane. Then we have some peptide glycan. Uh, and the gram positive has a huge uh, layer of uh, peptide glycan. So you you have some difference in the cell wall, and so you expect some difference in response about inhibition of uh, growth. 
And in this case, you don't have inhibition at all. Everything grows very well. Uh, so, nice. Then, the Highland groups did another work in the same year using, uh, instead of choline chloride, use a phosphonium eutetic. This MTPB. And, but using the same uh, hydrogen bond donors, glycerol with I ethylene glyco and 3 ethylene glyco uh, then some results can be seen here uh, some in inhibition uh, were presented and then first of all you, you and then we we can discuss that depending on uh, hydrogen bonding acceptor we have uh, a different uh, behavior so we have here uh, just a photo about this test this petri dish uh, test uh, you see here an in inhibition if we a halo about the paper disk so you see here that is not very precise uh, data uh, because uh, depending on the uh, diffusion of this material you have a difference in the the halo diameter but is a good uh, qualitative data. Uh, I, although uh, the, this work used as a, a quantitative data. Whatever. Well, uh, another uh, approach instead of petri dishes you can use also other kind of organisms instead of bacteria and fungi you can use virus fish cells human cells in this case cancer cells and, uh, plants and uh, seed plants uh, or in vivo né? animals and mar marine organisms well uh, everything is turning to in vitro tests né? the in vivo and many kinds of in vivo tests is uh, not uh, not encouraged anymore né? to to avoid but we can we have to focus in the in, in microorganisms in bacteria fungi here uh, 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 in although uh, many kinds here is not used in the uh, in the industrial uh, scale uh, here especially those niggers is in the wrong box it's just a fungi uh, but uh, we can use pathogens to uh, screening the, the eutetics if it has an answer about has inhibition or not and then we can use a quantitative method as uh, MICI uh, M-I-C uh, minimum uh, inhibition inhibitory inhibition uh, concentration uh, there is a meaning that uh, is the concentration that uh, eutetic solvents uh, uh, allow some growth of the microorganisms uh, uh, just a little more 
quantity a little more concentration of eutetis and then the bacterial fungi is dead so it is important information in, in the case that uh, if you want to use the eutetic solvents with microorganisms to a biotransformation or maybe the uh, extractive fermentation uh, so uh, important information to avoid uh, uh, to avoid transpass this this limit of concentration you have to use above this this limitation uh, but also can be a uh, useful information about antimicrobial uh, compounds uh, but okay you have other tests here to, to evaluate so we have idea what tests we can make to evaluate toxicity but we can imagine what is really important to influence to determine, determine the toxicity what are the major factors for toxicity profiles uh, first type of catch kitchen uh, the type of kitchen uh, can lead to a chart the look is the localization that occurs during the formation of eutetic so for example uh, collinium né? the collinium catchum uh, enhance the toxicity of certain mixtures through the interaction of the recipient and head groups with cellular membrane groups. The accumulation of positively charged cations creates electrostatic attraction on the surface of cells membranes and this eventually damages the negatively charged bilayer net phospholipids. So, uh, Collinium can make everything that is, is right here. So it can induce some problems in the in the membranes, some pores. So you see here that, that depending on the combination of catching in anion uh, you have to think about the Hofmeister series for high ions concentration or higher ionic concentration meaning that you have two types né, of ions cosmotropic and chiotropic that respectively a high and low degree of hydration around the ion ion so uh, mix, mixing, uh, mixing here two uh, chiotropic anions and cations or two cosmotropic anions and cations can be a problem for membranes and the strong affinity with the bilayers cation residues of the membranes can induce here can lead into uh, increasing a, mem a membrane por porosity, releasing lactate de dehydrogenase. That is a, a important in, uh, enzyme from metabol from uh, uh, microorganism metabolism. So you can verify the increase of the porosity uh, analyzing this enzyme in the medium uh, also can promote the synthesis of ROS head co oxygen species that is meaning there is a oxidative stress occurring and is can lead to apoptose of the cell and you can just go to disruption of cellular membranes everything can be occurring at the same time or just one or 
one of these options. Other thing to think is the chemical nature of the HBG. So organic acids can be a problem. Uh, for example, oxalic acid. Uh, a, a work from the, the group of uh, pr Professor Isabel Marrucho uh, studied this case in the in, in uh, changing the synthesis method for instead of reading using grinding grinding uh, uh, you can verify that can formation of derivatives kind of esters or degradation products and even increasing the acidity of the system so low pH probably the cell is not going to grow probably is high probability of death so if you can use other types of HBD such sugars amines and alcohols can be better to the uh, the cell or to the microorganisms Okay, until now we talk about the uh, toxicity. We know that uh, microorganisms uh, can can be present with uh, eutetic solvents, but they gonna be crazy and go very uh, mutations. Uh, something rap happens with the DNA, uh, RNA so some people like the group of the professor Nicholas Hood uh, start working with this in the in the 2010 with this work and uh, we, he, his group showed that native, uh, native DNA structure can be preserved in, th in the presence of chloride, chloride, urea, but uh, is less stable than in the aqueous solutions. So it's the first trial. Yeah, we can we can preserve the DNA. It's good. And then with other work, we try to use another another types of coline chloride eutetics using lysol and ethylene glycol and is soluble the dna is soluble uh, with some mass with 2.5 percent uh, ww or 5.5 percent uh, 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 uh serine 25 degrees Celsius, uh, maybe because the interactions between the choline cations and phosphate groups of DNA and, and uh, this important information here is that no degradation was found. Uh, they made electrophoresis and no degradation was found even after six months of storage at room temperature. It's a big, huge information. Uh, okay, is, uh, don't give the information about, you can't take this DNA, uh, insert in some microorganisms and try to express some protein and, and see that if it works, but it's something, it's a big something, and we can be more comfortable to use eutetic solvents with uh, microorganisms uh, without going to any mutations. I think it's good to know, uh, but uh, until now, uh, no work using uh, 
uh, biphasic systems, strative fermentation, was was published that I know. Uh, nothing was published using this idea. Uh, so maybe we can try. It's not it's not very easy. Uh, my group here in Brazil. Uh, try something using ionic liquids, so it's more complicated than than uh, seems because uh, to maintain uh, a biphasic system using ionic liquids in probably with eutetic solvent, uh, you you made every uh, study using a, a standard condition uh, with salts, concentrations well defined, and in fermentation, uh, the culture medium is not well defined. Uh, industrial culture medium is not well defined. So you have uh, yeast extract that have so many components. You have um, uh, Wastes of uh, corn, so uh, we have a, a big variation in the composition of the medium, in that uh, have a, a big influence in the in the formation of two phases. So it's a necessary work to do, but it's more. Slow than, <laughs> than I want. Something similar that we presented in the case of ionic liquid, you can think about antimicrobial eutetic solvent too. Uh, here, an uh, uh, example of that uh, uh, using uh, fat acids. Then you can see here. Uh, the the comparison between the the components of the eutetic solvent and then the eutetic solvent, and when you think and make, you don't have a great difference uh, when you use them. So in this case here, uh, you have. Uh, when you use uh, lauric acid or decamoic acid, you have even a, a worse result uh, because you have a, a, a high value of meat. So you, you, in this case, you don't have the synergic effect. But you have some action. Uh, maybe not synergic effect, but something you 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 can visualize here. Uh, almost in 30 minutes of ex exposure, you have almost 90 percent of uh, inhibition of the growth in this biofilm-rich and microorganisms. Here they use the C10 and C12 eutetic uh, using the concentration here. Well, thinking about the biodegradability, uh, if you have some types of ionic liquids that uh, don't promote the total inhibition of the microorganisms, so you have the chance of biodegradation. So the first step here is the is decomposition in mono, monomers, oligomers of the material, and then the mineralization of the product, uh, liberating, uh, releasing CO2 and uh, H2O. And just to make clear, there are some uh, standards. 
uh, uh, when you have uh, 20 or 60 degradation of the material, you can uh, consider the uh, inherently biodegradable. Uh, more than 60% is readily biodegradable and then ultimately biodegradable when it is totally uh, complete degradation. We have some types of tests. Uh, the more common is the closed bottle, uh, evaluating the oxygen, uh, and the manometric respirometry, uh, evaluating also the, the oxygen, but in this case, the consumption. Then one example of this manometric respirometry, the Oxtox system, they have this uh, CO trap in, in, in a control unit here. So here we have the similar scheme that we saw in the toxicity. So we have high here as more biodegradable and low, né? not. And then you see some types of cation here, the Collinium, pyridinium, plastic ionic liquids, nicotinium as more biodegradable than imidazolium, clonidinium, and others. We see here the alkyl side chain that in this case, long hydrophobic alkyl chain uh, can be more biodegradable. Uh, acid group amino acids too. Uh, here we see in the case of anion, organic acid, alkyl sulfate and sulfonate, and carboxylates and amino acids as more biodegradable. In the case of filtetic solvents, we have some works about that with biodegradability, but we we'll have field for more. Here we see the uh, the use of closed bottles method, uh, evaluating the biodegradability of 6% removal of theoretical oxygen demand in a day window between within uh, 28 days period. So we have a comparison here using choline chloride and the NND2 ethanol ammonium chloride. Uh, then you see that uh, beginning here with glycerol, urea, uh, ethylene glycol, and then some similar with the water uh, acceptor, hydrogen bonding acceptor. Uh, you have uh, the same uh, profile. Then you have different materials here uh, to compare, but you have all, all of them uh, beyond 60% of removal of uh, oxygen demand. So all of them is readily um, uh, biodegradable, biodegradable. In this other work, they compare, use another method, the manometric experiment test, uh, taking uh, samples every 112 minutes for 28 days. And that's the same idea here about the 60%. And comparing uh, three types of uh, eutetic solvent, known ones, uh, glycerin is the choline chloride glycerol, ethylene uh, co uh, choline chloride ethylene glycol, and relin is choline chloride urea. So in, uh, this work is different that it, they evaluate uh, pure and aqueous mixtures of them. So incredibly, uh, the pure eutetic solvents is readily biodegradable, like the positive control. 
but when you put water, uh, they are uh, less biodegradable. In this case here, with glycerol. In this case, using urea, you have uh, a reversed uh, profile. You have the presence of water or more uh, biodegradability of the autetic than when they are poor, but both of them are readily biodegradable. And then you repeat the, the profile of glycerol using ethylene glypo. Uh, that the water has less, uh, promotes a less biodegradability of this autetic solvent. Uh, it's very interesting, but maybe only glycerol and uh, iPhone glycol uh, is not enough to maintain the growth of microorganisms to promote here the biodegradation. Then urea. Urea has a, a nitrogen source for the microorganisms. So they they uh, 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 good stimulus to the growth than that so maybe th that is the difference between them well thank you for your attention uh, if anyone has some question for me just email me uh, bernardo arroba eq.ufrj.br or you can see our site of our laboratory uh, cleantech.eq.ufrj.br Thanks so much. Okay. Thank you, Professor Bernardo. So, uh, well, Professor Bernardo is online, but he could not come because of other issues, but he has responded to the queries which has been sent on YouTube. You can have a look at it. Now, if there are any more queries, you can paste it there or you can type or you can send it directly to him. So uh, now we have come to the concluding uh, lecture and it is now officially this uh, short term course is uh, over. So I would request uh, if there is any, uh, now all the participants especially, if there is anything you want to add or comment on this particular short term course, any about anything, not only of the lecture, about this organization of this course, and if you want to have something more out of it, so you are welcome to comment on it. Anyway, you can put your hand so that I can uh, call by your by name. Yes, anybody? Nothing. So it seems that uh, um, uh, you are happy with this particular organization. OK, so uh, uh, is, is Dr. Partho Sharati here. Dr. Partho Sharati Gopatagar. Okay, he is not here. Okay, so uh, so we come to the conclusion, and we have seen, and overall I can summarize this of uh, the entire uh, short term course. We had twelve lectures spread across four days. Uh, in the first day, Professor Isabel Maruko and uh, especially. Uh, Actually, it's only her, Professor Isabel Maruko spoke and introduced you ionic liquids and tick solvents. Then uh, he talked about this extractants, how it use extractant for the compound from water. And then as extractants from pollutants, heterotic mixtures, how they are being done. Then the next day, he talked about the polyionic liquid and the supporting ionic liquid membranes. And finally, he also talked about uh, polyionic liquid sensors for solid phase micro extraction. While the second uh, day and third day continued with our different molecular modeling strategies, uh, 
then the chemical hydrides as uh, ionic liquid as medium for chemical hydrides with respect to thermal dehydrogenation and dr pastasharadi gopathadar spoke wonderfully about the microfluidic the photolithography and microfabrication techniques and which we are also intending to use it in our own application and the concluding session were held by professor bernardo to talk about mainly the bioactive compounds then the processing of biomass and then the enzyme catalysis organocatalysis and finally the toxicity of the solvents which we just now heard so first of all i like to thank both the our speakers professor isabel marukwa and professor bernardo for giving their time and sparing the invaluable time and talking to us and sharing their ideas and their work and uh, i would like to also thank uh, uh, my uh, the ex- entire workshop secretary i mean he can he con- he actually did everything starting from the uh, the participant list and then uh, collecting the data so i would like to thank dr papu kumar nayak for holding this entire conference papu uh, is al- is already here and also the help from doc, uh, from our navendu pal who also talked about the molecular modeling strategies and uh, he we all together designed this entire course so papu you want to dr papu you want to say anything regarding this course you are welcome to do so yeah Okay, Andrew. Andrew, uh, you want to tell, say anything? You have written some. Uh, you can go ahead, Andrew. Uh, what is your full name? Can you introduce? Yeah. Hello. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Can you hear me? Go. Ahead. Yes, yes, we can hear you. Yeah. Thank you so much. Uh, myself is uh, Chris Santos Andrew. I'm a CSR towards a PhD fellow from CSR Sikri, Karakudi, Tamil Nadu. Uh, actually, I'm working on the area of using ionic liquid oh. for depositing of uh, lanthanide uh, elements. Though the course was very inter- yeah, the course was very interesting, but the only thing I think uh, you the, the the speakers that were invited, I think. they could not touch the area of applying dipitic uh, solvent or ionic liquid for depositing of uh, metal probably next time when you are organizing it please kindly include that area so that we can benefit sure Andrew. yeah sure thank you Bye. so much yeah. yeah thank you thanks a lot for your suggestion yeah this is a topic which is obviously it's very Uh, i think there is uh, one professor in uh, uk professor and abbot in fact yeah. professor abbot is the one who originated this eutectic solvents coined this term he is uh, well into working this the area which you are talking about metal dip, deposit using ionic liquids yeah so, he was my since, supervisor he was my supervisor during my masters program in university of leicester so i worked right university right, of leicester right. Uh, right, right, right. Yeah, so, yeah. I'm sure yeah. maybe next time we will try to take this variety of topics and make it more uh, informative and comprehensive. Thank you all for the suggestions. Anything? Anybody else you want to talk? Navendu is there? Navendu? Is Navendu there? Okay. Okay. I think Navendu is not there. Okay. Uh, then if any other comment you can make else i will uh, officially close this short term course and uh, would like to thank overall iit guwahati and the sponsor especially which i should not forget the spark the society of promotion for academic and research network 
so they have given the wonderful opportunity to conduct such workshop we also held one workshop in june and this is second one uh, overall around 140 odd participants registered for this course and uh, if i look up both of them around 50 odd participants actually they all sometime or later they actually listen to these lectures so it's a very uh, i mean very positive uh, like development so they see that lot of people are uh, are in this uh, interested in this ionic liquids and out of that i think uh, only one third of the total participants had knowledge of ionic liquids and so it means that there are other participants more number of participants who are interested in this topic so we will make it more comprehensive on the next time onwards and thank you all for joining us hope you keep well and stay safe thank you thank you so much thank you thank you all thank you you keep well and stay safe thank you thank you so much thank you thank you all thank you